The National Assembly has been urged to focus on insecurity as against the hijab bill. The advice was given by the Christian Association of Nigeria, CAN, which that Nigeria already has laws protecting citizens from religious discrimination. The president of CAN also stated that unemployment is fueling insecurity because the terrorists and the bandits are able to recruit with idle hands. Well, joining us to have this conversation is security expert Peter Igbidion. Uh, thank you, Peter, for joining us. Thank you, Miriam. Good evening. All right. Um, let's start with the issue of the hijab. It did cause a crisis of sorts in Kwara State. Um, I think just last month here, there was a, 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 a crisis and the video was everywhere, you know, with students having to... Um, be told not to wear hijabs in certain schools because they think it's obstructing the uniformity uh, of you know the outfits and and of course the states saying that look these schools are no longer missionary schools they have been given back to government and government gave back so it's supposed to allow people to dress a certain way but going as far as getting a bill to um make this uh, thing so that when people are in public places, women, Muslim women are in public places, they must wear hijabs. Is that really a priority that we should be bothering ourselves with right now? Evidently, it's, it's not a priority. Um, and it is, it's a pointer to how weak the, or really let me say weak-minded the people who are in the circles of leadership are, that this is what they are considering a priority when it ought not to be. It is just a sad point out to the state of affairs that our, our, our nation is in. Now, like I said, the, we have we've been plagued by mostly all sorts that has built up to cause some form of insecurity as we speak. I'd like to just give you a little insight. I'm sure that you must have heard. Um, this morning, um, the NSCDC found seven bodies in Calabar. As of yesterday, there were attacks in Borneo. There were killings here and there. I mean, we're still talking about insecurity. In Lagos, a shop very close to where I was yesterday was being robbed, and my colleagues were in that shop. Broad mm. daylight, with sophisticated weapons, men on cyclists, uh, on motorcycles, rather. This mm. is how serious the situation of things is in Nigeria. But this bill, I'd like to let you know, has passed its second reading. And the Christian Association of Nigeria is saying, look, this is not as pressing as our insecurity. And they're saying we should be prioritizing our security right now because that is the major issue. Um, so let's talk security, Peter. Why do you think that it's become so bad in recent days? Well, um, one of the reasons it has gotten this bad is that the, the general public has a greater level of distrust for government. So many people are more likely to take laws into their own hands, as a matter of speaking. Um, also, poverty has become, I mean, it's, it's, it's the news. We all know it, even if news didn't say it. Um, poverty, has, poverty now works on two legs in the streets of Nigeria, and people are doing everything that they can to survive, even if it means they will take to illegal methods to, to put food on the table. So with this invitation to anarchy that is being handed out courtesy of poverty, um, we will see many, many more people take to crime in the days and, and, and weeks ahead. Also, we know that we are, on, we are under policed. Um, there seems to be, to be a lack of, of effort. Let me even say that way from those who, who, are, who, are, who are to lead the charge against this insecurity. And because of that, um, it's almost a free for all. In, in, many, in many of my fora that would, I, I have discussions with my, my, my colleagues across the world, they keep referring to Nigeria as a failed state. And I, I, even though I want to differ because of my pride, I, when I see the, the pointers to these things, I, I tend to agree. But, but when you say that um, even those who are supposed to lead the charge seem to not be as encouraged or hyped as they should be, is it really their fault? Can you blame them? Like you have said, we're under-policed, and of course our security forces are overly stretched, and we know what they're having to deal with in the northeast, and of course now we have them in other parts of the north. We have banditry and we have the kidnappings. Um, can we really blame them for not being as 
um, hyped up or as encouraged as they should be doesn't mean that they're not doing their jobs, but then you have said readily that they're overstretched. So should that bulk be passed to them? Well, I, I want to say yes. I'll, I'll use a recent incident in our national um, um, consciousness as a, as, a, as a point of reference. Last year, when the agitation of citizens against um, police brutality and excesses of, 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 of security agencies got to a head with the NSAS protests that we saw, we saw government or certain leaders from government display almost apathy and then disregard for people's sentiments. We've seen the fallout of it after that. In fact, it's just some weeks ago, I remember I was on, I was on, your, on, on, your, on your station and we discussed how people were going to come out to protest the proposed reopening of the toll gate mm -hmm. and how there was, the, 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 the way the matter was, was tense, was charged up, didn't need to be because some of those who were speaking on behalf of government were hitting up the polity. So when you have people who are supposed to be calming the situation or trying to inspire confidence in the system, doing the opposite, what we see is what we're going, is what, what's going to happen. It was, it was bound to happen. Our leaders have dropped the buck. Let's call it what it is. So um, let's continue to talk about this issue of the hijab crisis because, you know, um, it has also become a crisis which could become mm -hmm. a religious war of sorts. And we know that Nigeria is a secular state, even though we also know that the two major religions, which is Christianity and Islam. And if the, the Muslims are saying, we want our women to be covered when they are in public spaces, why can't we all you know, go with it? I'm just asking, as for security reasons and for safety, because little things like this could spark into a thing that we might not be able to handle in the future. So shouldn't state governments be the ones handling this instead of the National Assembly passing a law or putting a bill um, you know, into law to make, that, make it a general law? Well, even if, even if you ask state governments to, to, to handle this, and I, I do believe that at some And when level, I say states, I'm sorry, Peter, when I say states, I'm talking about states that are predominantly Muslim where, you know, they yes, have yes, yes, the, yes. The certain Sharia laws mm -hmm. in place. Yes, I, I, I agree. And this is where I was going to. If you, if, even if you say those states should handle it, not everybody in those states, not even all Muslims hold this, the view that their women should be forced to wear um, hijab in public. So even there's, there's going to be dissenting opinions, even from people of the same faith. So by which means do we aggregate the consensus and, is, and say, okay, this is what the majority says, and then we can then let them have their way. It, and then if you're going to have their way, does this violate the tenets of what we call our constitution in this country? Again, it also shows the flaws in the constitution and I'm surprised that many of those who are frontline politicians or opposition politicians are not using this opportunity to address the failures of the night night constitution. Um, those who were calling for restructuring prior to the last elections, they've all gone quiet. And I don't, it, I mean, it just, beg, it just beggars belief that a political class is also asleep. Okay. Um, I want to keep pressing on the issue of dealing with little issues and little sparks before it becomes a fire. Um, Khan also spoke about creating jobs, having employment as a watchword, and the National Assembly prioritizing those things that had cost us to have insecurity in the first place instead of um, paying attention to this bill. They, uh, so I'm going to ask, for someone who works in security, and all of the things that you've seen and all the things that have been reported, can unemployment or rather creating employment be uh, maybe uh, a some, sort of, some form of a remedy to the situation of things? Or maybe should this issue, like an issue such as this, be addressed now that it's budding instead of it blowing into out of proportion? And then, of course, we'll now have our plate totally full with insecurity from outsiders and, of course, insecurity from within. Well, there, there are several um, indices that give, that give rise to um, increase in crime rates. One of those things is lack of employment for those who want to be actively employed. 
Um, and evidently, that is one of the, the, the issues Nigeria is suffering from now, that a larger portion of its youth is unemployed or not gainfully employed. We keep seeing, I mean, look at what happened during the, 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 the official lockdowns when coronavirus began um, last year. We saw in certain cities, in Lagos, in Ogun State, we saw young people who, who hitherto were supposedly law abiding. We saw them begin to march in the streets and go from house to house to rob, to commit crime. We, th those things were, were brought about because there was little, there was little um, work going on, there was little employment, and there was little or no means of, of getting food to eat. So you saw people literally become, become base animals. We saw people go back to the atavistic nature. And those things will happen in a situation like we have now, where the economy is failing, the naira and the dollar, I mean, that's another story for another day. But like, and, and like you're pointing out, I want to agree with you, the fact that there's a lack of employment is going to increase incentives for people to take to crime. And until government actually does something serious about this, um, we're likely to see more people take to crime in the days ahead. Well, I want to say thank you to you. Peter Median is a security expert. Um, thank you for being part of the conversation. Thank you. All right. Well, we'll take a short break now. I'll be giving you my take when we come back from the break. Here's my take. The judiciary, they say, in Nigeria is the hope of the common man. That common man may never have hope if the judiciary isn't working and functioning at its best. We want justice, but even the justices and the bench cannot get financial autonomy. Now this is detail for local governments and states legislatures. Where is the justice in that? If governments, especially in states, must work and the governors must step away from all of this and let these other arms function independently at their capacity because we call it a democracy. We can't keep hoping for divine intervention when all we know, we all know what to do, but we're not doing it. Now on the issue of the hijab, I'd like to say that are we prioritizing the right things? Are we channeling our resources and our time to the things that are deserving? Let's not Let's major on the major things because we know that there are bigger things that need our attention and not minor. Okay? So, because the, the days of minors will come, but that day is not today. Nigeria's got bigger issues. So, let's make hay while the sun shines. Now, dear leaders, let's get our priorities right. I am Mariana Kohn, thanking you for watching. Do have a good evening.